know it's Wednesday Wisdom Wednesday with MPK Greetings and welcome to episode 39 of Wisdom Wednesday with MPK. I'm Dawn, DawnyRobinBobin.com if you want to find me on the internet. And today I want to talk about two little words. And as I've been editing my book, uh, Dead Guys Don't Sin, Volume 2, I've been working backwards. So the I'm working backwards and it's in alphabetical order. The way Dead Guys Don't Sin 1 works is I just write and the poems, I line them up in alphabetical order. Seems orderly to me. And that's what I did in Dead Guys Don't Sin, Volume 2. And so the very last poem in my book is What If? Because W, you know. And I was editing the poem and I never finished it. It was one of those poems I never finished. I had the idea years ago and I just wrote it in, but it wasn't done. It was never finished. And now that I'm really trying to get uh, Dead Guys Don't Sin Volume 2 done, I have to go meticulously and do the labor of tweaking, finishing, editing, proofreading, you know, all the stuff that goes with editing a book. So I was working on this poem, What If? And I was thinking about the whole concept of what if and how what if really has two kind of uh, elements. There's the unhealthy what if and then there's the healthy what if. And so like the healthy what if is like, well, what do we do if we get a hurricane? People in Florida, they deal with hurricane season. Everyone gets ready. You prepare. And in Proverbs 3, 22, 3, it says this. It says, a prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. But a simple, but the simple pass on and are punished. So that's a healthy what if. Preparing for the hurricane that inevitably could come. That's a healthy what if. Getting your house ready, batten down the hatch, you know, well, what if you get life insurance because of what if? You get you get car insurance because of what if? You know, there's a healthy what if. It's just being prepared. It's being prudent. It's being wise. So this poem isn't as much about the healthy what if, but it's also, it, it, it's both elements. It's a healthy and unhealthy what if all in one. Now, what is the unhealthy what if? Well, the unhealthy what if is the fretting and the worrying. Well, what if I break my leg? What if I get cancer? What if my husband leaves me? My wife leaves me? My dog dies? What if, what if, what if? Oh, no, oh, no. And you start biting your fingernails and you're like not living. You're, 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 you stop living your current life because of something that didn't happen but could happen. You end up paralyzed by fear. The spirit of fear comes in and takes advantage of an unhealthy what if. So it's important as we followers of Jesus that we delete the unhealthy what ifs out of our lives and not let those win. And when they kind of creep up on you and fret and worry can through the unhealthy what ifs, we say, mm, no, no. A reality is where I'm going to live. Today is a gift. I'm going to live today. I'm not going to fret and worry because this might happen or could happen. So that is, this This poem is actually a, a walk through the entirety of the word. It's not the entirety, but it's a kind of a, an overview of some uh, some interesting what ifs. So it's kind of a twist on the idea of what if. So I'm just going to read the poem to you. And uh, the scripture that I picked for this poem was 1 Corinthians 10, 6 through 11. Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted and do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. 
nor complain, as some of them also complained, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. 1 Corinthians 10, 6-11. It's a whole passage about the Old Testament examples, and a lot of those examples can be found in the book of Numbers. But some people, so here's my blurb, some people inevitably have to learn the hard way. What if they, instead, didn't try the drugs at the party because they listened to their dad? What if they didn't have sex before marriage? Now, although I don't recommend living in the land of what if, I can't help but wonder sometimes. What if? Here it goes. What if those spies sent into Canaan had simply believed, reported back, that giants are no problem for our king? Perhaps the 40-year wandering would have never been recorded as a thing. God allowed their unbelief. He gave them free will. He let them say, No, Lord, but consequences fill the pages of Scripture to warn us today. His way is the way of life. Surrender or pay. Flash forward. Post-exilic times. 400 years of silence. God shut his mouth and let us be. But what if? What if Zacharias, the priest, was not the first time God attempted to speak? What if Zacharias was the 14th guy God tried, but all the rest said, no thanks, you're not the boss of me? What if Pilate said, the dude is innocent, I'm setting him free? What if Mary refused to carry our Savior? Or Joseph went through with the divorce decree? What if David would have closed his eyes instead of gawking at the bathing babe? What if King Saul feared God, not man, and obeyed? What if Moses stayed in Egypt? What if Potiphar's wife told the truth? What if Joseph was loved by his brothers? What if Esau made his own soup? What if Abram and Sarah believed God waited for Isaac instead of rushing into the Hagar and Ishmael pick? What if Abram stayed in Ur? What if Job in his despair committed suicide? Or escaped his pain with drugs that blur? What if Noah decided to drown instead of building a boat, saving all critters with fur? What if Cain played Parcheesi with Abel instead of murder? What if Adam refused to eat the fruit? What if Eve, instead of listening, gave the devil the boot? What if? What if? What if? We will never know because reality always trumps what if. And thank the Lord it does. What if usually travels with fret and worry and just turns your brain to fuzz? Dysfunctional, emotional slurry, leaving frayed nerves abuzz. Truth wins. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For his word, the Bible, our truth sword. This is not a choose your own ending book, although it kind of is. But please choose Jesus. There are only two answers on this quiz, life or death, Jesus or the enemy. All the answers to the life test are found in Christ. In him is your destiny. You have the power of decision to say no to a hell-filled eternity. What if? All right. So anyway, that was my little take on what if. I was thinking about that whole idea and then I thought about the word and and what if people didn't do what they did is really the moral of that what if. And the world will never know. But, you know, I just wanted to point out this very groovy jacket. What if I didn't go to that garage sale? What if I didn't pay the 10 cents to buy this brand new sparkly jacket? I mean, look at this. It even has these pink buttons. What if? There's tons of what ifs. But the answer is, choose Jesus. What if you don't? And it's all true. If you don't, and it's all true, you're making the biggest epic mistake of your life. So, that was my take on what if. And you can uh, go to my website. I will actually have this posted because I know there's a lot of 
there is a lot of Bible condensed into one list going backwards from uh, King... Where did I start? Oh, I started with the New Testament. It was at the priest Zacharias and went all the way back down to Adam. So that's a lot of church history and Bible history there. So you can go back and read those again. But I just want you to know that God is the God who cares about all of your fret and all of your worries. And he is the safe place. And you don't, we don't have to live a life of fear of what if. We can trust that all the what ifs, they're filtered through God's fingers. So why don't you trust him today? Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Until the next adventure, God bless you. Bye. You know it's Wednesday. Wednesday with them, PJ.